In this lesson, let's talk a lot more about masking and how we can utilize it with effects and local adjustments to make our images pop. So in my develop tab, all I've done with this image is I've used AI auto and I pulled back on the auto slider a bit to tone it down. So this is the original and that's all I've done to it. Nothing too crazy, just brought out a bit of these middle grays and some of the darker tones. So now let's head into the effects tab here. Let's add a filter and let's add the dynamic contrast filter. As I hover over the dynamic contrast filter, it says dynamic contrast adds clarity, also known as tonal contrast to make your photo pop. Well, with dynamic contrast, it's kind of the go-to filter for adding detail and making small and larger textures pop. So let's choose dynamic contrast. And right off the bat, let's look at the masking. So I'll click on my masking options with this rectangle there. And if I view my mask, it's all white. Remember in the last lesson, white reveals and black conceals. That's really the most important thing to remember when you're masking. White reveals, black conceals. With all white, it's applying the entirety of this filter to the entire image. So if I turn this off and on now, it's incorporating detail into the entirety of my scene. And let's just make this surreal so we can really see what is going on here. While this mask is all white, it means it's applying it to the entirety of my image. And let's say I don't want it applied to the entirety of my image. Let's say I only want it applied to these areas of foliage. There's a few different ways we can do that. The first way is to brush it away from specific areas. So if I want to protect an area from my shot, I can use my masking brush to remove that adjustment from that area. To access my masking brush, I'm just going to select this tool area here, this mask icon. And in the masking options, I have my masking brush up here. And I also have my masking bug. If your masking brush isn't selected, you can quickly grab it by hitting B on your keyboard. Now, two main things you need to remember when you're using the brush is your opacity and your mode. For mode, we need to make sure that our mode is either set to paint out or paint in. Because if we're painting in on top of an adjustment that's already 100% applied, it's not going to make it more intense. It's not going to do anything. So we need to make sure we're set to paint out here, which is what we are. And then we're going to modify our opacity a bit. The opacity is how strong the brushing is going to be. How much of this adjustment do you want to paint in or how much of this adjustment do you want to paint out? So I'm just going to keep my opacity and my flow at 100 because I want to remove the entirety of this filter. And I'll keep my feathering at 100 as well, just meaning I have a nice soft brush edge. So with my brush, I'm going to increase the brush size with the bracket keys on my keyboard. The right bracket will increase the brush size, the left bracket will decrease. So now I'm just going to brush this away from the sky area pretty roughly. And I'll brush it away from this walkway. And you can see by, by brushing it away from this walkway, it's removing that detail in there. So now if we go in here and we view our mask for this dynamic contrast, you can see the areas that I've removed from my mask because I painted them away using this masking brush. So if I were to paint something out of that image, I could see that in the mask view here. If I want to paint something back in, I can just switch my mode back to paint in and then I could paint that adjustment back into my photograph. So let's go back here and let's view our photo. And let's turn this off and on now while focusing on the areas that we protected. So if we turn this off and on, you can see it's only applied to the foliage over here and it's not applied to this walkway or the sky area. Another great way that we can apply masks inside of Photo Raw is by using color range masks. So inside of the masking options here, I'm just going to reset this mask to turn it back to all white, meaning it's revealing itself on the entirety of the image. But I'm going to go down here into my masking options and I'm going to choose color range. 
By choosing color range, it's going to apply this filter or adjustment to a specific set of color tones. I can choose those color tones with this box right here and I can choose from different specific colors or I can use this color dropper here to select an area that's specific to my image. So I'll just drop it on this area of foliage. Now if I view my mask here, you can see it's targeting those specific areas in my scene. Remember, white reveals and black conceals. The white is only applied to those darker greens because that's the color that I chose. We can always modify that range by pulling back on this color range slider and removing it from those tones that aren't the same color tone as that green. So now if we view our photo and we turn this off and on again, it's pretty much doing the same thing, but it's a little bit more specific now because we're targeting specific colors in the shot rather than brushing it in and away manually with a brush. So now that we've applied some detail in here using masks with our effects tab, I'm just going to remove this dynamic contrast filter so that we can talk about applying masks in the local tab. Because as we know, if we add a filter in the effects tab, let's just add a photo filter, white reveals and black conceals, but we have all white by default, meaning that the filter is automatically applied to our image right out of the gate. Inside of the local tab, it's the opposite. The mask view is by default all black, meaning it's concealing this adjustment from the photo. So what we need to do to apply this adjustment is mask it in or paint it in to our image. So rather than using this darken style here, I'm gonna go into my more menu and I'm going to choose HDR look. With HDR look, I can use it to incorporate a lot more detail similar to what we were applying with that dynamic contrast filter. And remember, you can use any sort of look or style you want. I'm just using detail because it's really easy to see when I turn the adjustments off and on. So we can see that we're all black here, meaning that we don't have anything applied to our image. So let's use our local masking tools, which we can head over and grab in this local area there. And if I head up top here, and up top here in this top tool modifier bar, it's similar to the mask tools that we were looking at earlier, where we have our adjustment brush, and then we have our adjustable gradient. And the adjustment brush is the exact same thing as the masking brush, it's just used for local adjustment layers. Then we have the adjustable gradient, which is the exact same thing as the masking bug, it's just, again, for local adjustment layers. So, we talked about the adjustment brush and the masking brush, but let's talk about the adjustable gradient and the masking bug. And with this adjustable gradient tool, we're going to be using shapes and gradients to blend our masks in with our scene. So to get a better understanding of what the masks do, let's just open up this preset menu here. So remember white reveals and black conceals. So with these little previews, you can see that the areas in white are the areas that are going to reveal the adjustment. And the areas in black, those are going to conceal the adjustment and protect those areas on your photo. So I want these, or at least this adjustment, applied to the bottom. So I'll choose this linear top option, and then I'll just drop this down. And you can see that by dropping it down, it's bringing in this adjustment directly to the bottom, but it's not applying it anywhere up top. So if I go into my masking options for this adjustment and I view my mask, I can head over to this mask and to modify the adjustable gradient mask, the larger handle will allow us to move it around. This little handle allows us to rotate the mask. And then these perforated edges will allow us to feather the mask and blend it in with our scene. So let's just use the perforated edges, we'll pull up on it and you can see it's really feathering this adjustment into our scene. You can see it's barely applying the adjustment up here, but down here it's still very, very strong. So let's view this, and let's turn this off and on now. And it's much more blended with the scene now rather than before when it wasn't feathered at all. So this is a great adjustment that you can use for modifying foregrounds and modifying backgrounds because you can blend the adjustment in with the different areas of your photograph.